um, there's brothers that come in and understand different different uh, perspectives. But when we all come together, we like to say we're like five fingers. When we come together, we make a strong fist, and that's Israel. You know, so uh, it's a beautiful thing. So, Elder Baba Kishab, if you can, let's go ahead and pull the next script like this. And you threw my commandments behind you. And you threw my law behind you. Like, and then what's the other one? You turned from even hearing the law. Your prayers are abomination. I don't know how anybody can preach, preach the laws are done away with when the scriptures just is like an overflowing rushing river of living water of keep my commandments and live. In that day, Judah will be saved and Israel six. All right, this is a uh, Jeremiah chapter 23, verse six. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. So again, our righteousness. So nobody's ever claiming their own righteousness, right? That, that's, that's, that's a big thing that has to be understood because uh, brothers get in this truth. And I'm not going to say we start being harsh to Christians and everyone else who's not in the truth. But um, we always got to remember that. We got woke up. We didn't know. You know what I mean? We were off. And um, that righteousness that spoke about in, in verse 6, it says the Lord, our righteousness. The Lord is our righteousness. So that's the spirit and the mind when we bring this truth out to people. Because we go on the streets, right? And they start thinking, we think, they always say this. Oh, do you keep all the laws? You know how they talk to us? Uh, they act, they try to act like we're self-righteous Pharisees, and that's not the case, right? The scripture says it's the Lord, our righteousness. We're not self-righteous or none of that. So that's that's key. That's why that verse came out first. Go ahead, King. What's the next verse? The next verse is Philippians chapter three, verse nine. This is uh, yep. Yeah, this is Philippians chapter three, verse nine and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. God, his righteousness which is of God. There is another witness. Let's read that again one more time, slowly, please. Yep, this is uh, Philippians chapter three, verse nine. having my own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness righteousness which is of God by faith God, God. now verse 9 and be found in him be found in him again we know being found in him who's the him God. say it again Con, and be found in him. So so watch this. There's Yahweh, right? Somebody never met Yahweh, and they meet him for the first time, and all Yahweh does is bring out the truth of this gospel and Yahweh Shai, and boom, boom, boom. And then this guy goes back to his family, and he says, man, I found this dude. His name is Yahweh. He was all about Christ. So when you look at that in verse 9, and be found in him, Everyone in this is right here is being found in him. If somebody meets you, they're gonna they, they they meet you for the first time, they found you, they meet you, they're gonna find that you're in him, and that's the difference between you and somebody else. So again, that righteousness is in him. Let me keep reading it and be found right. in him, not having my own righteousness. So we need to just throw all that out the window, all of that. Everything that's righteous comes from these scriptures and is being in him, walking in Hamashiach and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. That's what the Pharisees have. That's what the Edomites have. They judge us self-righteously. Uh, there was a Netflix, babe, what's that thing on Netflix? I if like, any white man in the world you guys ever says, seen that? give me liberty or give me death, uh, the entire yeah. white world applauds. Oh. When a black man oh. says exactly I, I the same thing, lunch. And I walk he is judged a criminal, 
and treated like one, and everything possible is done to make an example of this bad nigger so they won't be any more like him. The story of the Negro in America is the story of America. It is not a pretty story. I'm a black man in a white world. And the audacity and the caucasity of these these uh, folks that were looking down on our brothers, it was just in so America, crazy to I see. I was free it. only in battle, but never free to rest. We need to take action, any kind of action, by any means necessary. They needed us to speak to Cotton, and neither of them need us anymore. Neither of them need us, they're going to kill us all off. It blew me away because these people are so self-righteous. There are days when you wonder what your role is in this country and what your future is in it. I can't be a pessimist because I'm alive. The question you've got to ask yourself, the white population of this country has got to ask itself, is why it was necessary to have a nigger in the first place. Because I'm not a nigger. I'm a man. But if you think I'm a nigger, it means you need it. And you gotta find out why. And the future of the country depends on that. That's what the Edomites have. They judge us self-righteously. You know what I mean? They're looking down on another people like very severely. Like, you, you know, they had their signs and all that. So that's what we want to do. We want to purge any leaven of self-righteousness. The only thing righteous is the law, statutes, and commandments and being in Hamashiach. Let me keep going. So it says, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. Now remember, faith without works is dead. So in Christ, you keep the law. So don't let no Christian try to chalk you up right there and play a game. Because that's not what, you know, that's very clearly saying through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So we have faith that we do everything Christ commands us to do, which is, he says, I, ha I don't have my own doctrine. My doctrine's not of my own, it's my father's. So when we understand that, when we put on Christ, who are we really putting on? Most high. Time. Uh, and that's what, that's what we need to do when we're going out there. When we say we're putting on these law, statutes, and commandments, we're putting on Christ, we're putting on the Most High, that's what we're trying to give to our people. So when we street preach, these are type of script, scriptures we're saying, listen, there's a conversion that has to be done. Then we can go to the laws, converts the soul, all that type of stuff. But this is what we're putting on. So when we go to Passover and we partake in Passover and eat of that lamb, it ain't because, oh, I be street preaching or I be doing videos or I be doing this and that. No, it ain't none of that. It's because I'm in Hamashiach and the grace of Yahweh is on us as a people. And we're keeping these law statutes and commandments in faith. So that's what we're putting on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right, come, come. All right, so those just Hallelujah. those just those two scriptures we brought out is removing us of our thinking of who we think we are and putting Christ in the most high upon us. So that's good. That's only two scriptures that are that powerful. Go ahead, King. What's your third one? Okay, the third one is uh John chapter one, verse one. Perfect. Read. Bring it out. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. See? Again, I repeat. Yeah, go ahead. I'll repeat it one more time. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So all praises, again. Christ is the Word, right? He, he manifested in the Word. The Word manifested and became flesh and dwelt among us. Matter of fact, uh, Daniel Allah. Now, let me ask you guys a question. If the Word became flesh in Hamashiach and he's our example, shouldn't the Word become flesh in us as well? Shouldn't it manifest in our walk? So that's putting on Christ. Watching Christ die for me. Kind. So we follow him. We're walking in the same footsteps, loving the same way he did. 
being austere the same way he was, you know what I mean? Not being a man of folly, uh, a man of much gain, a man of many sorrows, everything that he has lined out for us to walk in and receive this dispensation of time. Because remember, when we get the kingdom, it's going to be a whole different vibe, Con. Uh -huh. I mean, we're going to still be in this righteousness of Hamashiach, but we're going to be rulers at that point. And we're ruling now. We're already ruling our vessels, putting on Christ, learning to rule our homes the best we can, uh, ruling over our children, uh, those type of things. When I say ruling, I mean being examples to the flock. All right, you got that preset, Mijo? Yeah, I got it. We learned, we learned how to John chapter 1, verse 14. Bring it out. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, I mean, how clear is that that that's a Mashiach how it's shot? Uh, doesn't get any clear. Uh, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only uh, begotten. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So there it is. That's what we're putting on. Just like Christ put on uh, his, father, his father's understanding. Any precepts? Uh, How do you got one? Yeah, yeah come. I got one. This is on the book of um, First Peter. Uh, chapter 2 verse 21 but even, unto, but even here on 2 where ye call because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps mm. right so just like he said he said um, follow me he said the script says that he left us an example to follow after his steps mm. right to walk as he walked Christ walked perfectly, right? Mm. He kept the feast days. He kept the commandments. Not saying that we're not going to fall. We're going not going to stumble because the just man will fall seven times. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, though, we don't just completely go off and just be like, oh, man, Christ died for us. You know, um, I'm 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 saved through Him. I'm I'm forgiven. No, He left us an example to follow after His steps, to do what He did, to try to live as He did. Because as I said, our righteousness is as filthy rag. But when we have the faith in Christ, and then we also keep the commandments, and we, uh, um, to the best of our ability, live to keep out the commandments, right? Then that's when um, um, we will get ourselves. Um, it, I was just thinking about this uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, Most High hates a false balance. Right. Right. And when you think of it, those who are still in Christianity, they have a false balance because uh -huh. they say all you need is Christ. Right. Well, that's a false balance. All right. You need Christ and you still need the laws. Right. right? Now there's. It's balanced, so you can't just have one and, the, and not the other. You can't just say, oh, I got the law, right, and then not have Christ. And you can't just say, oh, I got Christ, but I don't keep no law. That's a, that, that's, that's a false balance. Precept, Revelation 14, 12. Um, Daniela, you want to grab it? Revelation 14. I get it, I get it. All right, come. All right. Right, right along what Aki was saying. And that's what we want to really show our people. You know, uh, you know, when you watch the movie Friday, he's like, damn, you got sugar, no Kool-Aid. You got peanut butter, no jelly. You got cereal, no damn, milk. No burger. <laughs> right, man. Uh, got read, it. Read, read it. Book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Yeah, there's, a, there's those two King was saying. You got to have them both. If not, it's a false balance. Does that make sense? Oh, oh. That's why our people, you know, we have grace through Hamashiach because um, we get puffed up and self-righteous and, you know, we fall short. And we, we stop loving our brothers the way we're supposed to and we just go off. And uh, Hamashiach has a way to, to humble us when you see what he did for his brothers. And that's what brother... Uh, King Yahweh brought out that you know walk in his footsteps, suffer for your brother, love your brother, 
uh, bear his bear his cross with him. Con. Uh, uh, All right. Let's go to the next precept, uh, Elder. The water. Romans chapter four. Verse three. Um, I got four versions. In case we want to pull it out of any different kind of version. Uh. Romans chapter 4 verses uh, verse 3 for what said the scriptures Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness uh, John, and as the Malak brought out that was a witness in Romans and there was a written witness in James 2 and 23 and the scripture was fulfilled which saith Abraham believed Yahweh and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of Yahweh so let's go a little deeper on it real quick. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? That's a question. 21, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect and the scripture was fulfilled. And that's what we just read. Verse 24, ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Big old click right there. Likewise, also was not Rahab. We know what happened with Rahab. As for the body, as for as the body without the spirit is dead. Check this out. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it unto him for righteousness. We keep hearing about this righteousness. Look, here's another witness. Genesis 15 and 6. But let's get what this righteousness is. Read this. This is Genesis, right? Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge. Here's the clicker. My commandments, my statues, and my laws. Abraham put on Hamashiach. This is such a beautiful scripture because it gives hope to those Christians that don't know yet. Because remember, we was Christians and all we had faith in Christ. Remember those days? But that faith in Christ came. That you that doesn't come back void. You put faith in Christ even if they painted him to make him look like Caesar Borgia, even if they said you don't have to keep his commands. We still knew that there was a son of the most high. We knew that wasn't right. It didn't sit right with us. You know what I'm saying? It was like, what the heck? But just because you had enough faith as a mustard seed, the scripture says, then he opened up these scriptures to you. Even when you go in there and you read a script and you don't quite understand it, the most high still sees you searching out the scriptures. Then maybe, you know, like a week later or something, you read it and then you get an understanding. You're like, oh, okay, I get it now. So uh, let's read that again. Romans chapter four, verse three. For what said the scripture? Mm -hmm. Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now watch this. What's the way to believe God? You keep I'm the commandment.
Say that again. Okay, so that he he kept the first one on deck, keeping the commandments. If you if he reads to do a commandment and you do it, that's believing on God. Con. God. God. All right. Now. God. Yeah, bring that out. Huh? Yeah, bring that out. Huh? Sirach, um, thirty-two and twenty-four. Got it. It says, he that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandment, and he that trusteth in him shall fare never the worse. Right? So yeah. when and a lot of a lot of cats say that, oh yeah, I believe, I believe in Jesus, I believe in the most high. Well, it says here that if you believe, right, you gonna take heed to the commandment. You can't say that you believe and you don't, don't take no heed to the commandments, you don't pay no attention to, to the commandments. Right. And, and you know what? There's another verse too. It goes like this. And you threw my commandments behind you or threw my law behind you. Like, and then what's the other one? You turn from even hearing the law, your prayers are abomination. I don't know how uh, anybody can works. preach, preach the laws are done away with when the scriptures just is like an overflowing Russian river of living water of keep my commandments and live. It's crazy. But that shows you the deception and that and, and people doing that they have not put on Christ because we read in John one and one that he was the what the word do the word right and the word is telling you what to do which is keep the commandments so that's these right. people are playing games and that's a serious game to play and and it's sad because you could get lost up, locked up in it because you because of disobedience in your heart you don't want to do, do what the Bible says. All right. Mm -hmm. So now that's a fire precept. Ak, that's the rock 32 and 24 goes with that uh, revelations 14, 12 every time. Now uh -huh. that's, that's going to be the double punch right there. So those taking notes, these are powerful notes to whoever you talk to. You're talking to a, someone in Catholicism and they're like, we don't have to keep the commandments. You take them to revelations 14, 12. Oh shoot. We lost Aki. Hopefully they come back on. Um, Oh, there they go. Yeah, you good, King. Let's see. Like, you want to take them to Revolution, Revelations 14, 12. If they struggle with the Apocrypha, just show them a 16, 11 with Sirach in it. And then they'll know, oh, that's in the Bible. So these are good precepts, y'all. When you're, when you're telling people how to put Christ on, you have to keep the commands, right? There's, there's a put Christ on in the Christian church that's just like, I don't even know what they're, what, what are they putting on? You see what I'm saying? What 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 are they putting on? They're not putting on the commandments. So what are they putting on? Someone's gonna have to show me that. That's you know what? <laughs> that's what we should ask next time we're in a debate with a Christian. How do you put on Christ? You know what I mean? What is what is your way of putting on Christ? And if they start saying, "Oh, being loving," then we take them to the law where it says, "Love thy brother." Con. So they really are putting on the commandments. They just have to see it in the right fashion. All right. Next precept, Elder Baba Kusha. Khan. Okay, the next one is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. All right. All right. So, so everybody's unworthy. Everybody's unworthy. There's nobody worthy. Nobody. But, but uh, give me this precept, uh, uh, Daniela. Uh, I die daily. First Corinthians 15 and 31. I protest, I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Stop. I die daily. You see, hold on, before you even say I die daily, again, another brethren is in Christ. You see that? Like I found him to be in Christ. What is all this in Christ? This, this, is, this is the apostles and the disciples talking like this. This is 1 Corinthians. Read it again, mijo. 1 Corinthians 15 and 31, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. 
What does that mean, anybody? What does it mean to die daily? Like having a new heart, he dies daily for the most, hold on, my bad, watch on see. He dies daily um, when it comes to like doing the work and repenting and like he, trying to find no, that's, the best way so, to no, that's him. good. But like David prayed for a new heart. Con, David prayed for a new heart. What was you gonna say, Quinn? I said, uh, dropping, dropping all the, dropping all the, dropping all the old and picking up the new. Con, con, being, being renewed, being renewed. Um, like, like both of you said, repenting and dropping the old stuff and putting on Christ. And Christ is contrary to this world because this world was handed to the wicked so that the wicked promoting all their ways. So we have to come out of their ways. And that's why Paul, even Paul was a part of the uh, Pharisees. And give me this precept, Daniela. Uh, count it all dung, D-U-N-G, count it all dung. And remember, Paul was very intelligent, raised, raised with the Pharisees. He knew the law, like, and he spoke multiple languages. Paul's no joke. There's, there's a reason why Paul's writing all the letters to all these uh, churches. When you have that, Miho, bring it out. Philippians 3 and 8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. You see that? Everything else basically, excuse my Hebrew, is shit. That's what dung is. He'll 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 cancel everything, and tear the whole thing down to put on Christ. You see you see what I'm saying? So that's. That's what we want to do is we want to say, okay, what am I not doing to put on Christ? So you go in the scriptures and you look at how Christ is and you're like, okay, do I get down like Christ? Am I strong enough to rebuke and call my partner a devil? Can I turn to Peter and say, get behind me, Satan? We have to be strong enough to do that. Then we have to also be strong enough to take a death for our family. Line them up. That's putting on Christ. I know, I know us brothers on this line ain't playing. We ain't let nobody hurt each other. You see what I'm saying? We would die just like we cry, like like the apostles would for each other. There's a lot going on in this body, and there's a lot of love, and, and ain't nobody no cowards here. Cowards get cast where, y'all? Like a fire. You know that precept? Cowards get cast in the lake of fire. Fire. So all praises. All right, let's. Uh, Baba Kusha Elder, you want to go to the next one? Uh, first Peter, mm -hmm. chapter 2, verse 24. Uh, first Peter, this is First Peter, chapter 2, verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. See, that's parabolic language, but it's tangible. Um, watch this. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. So that's documented. So anybody who don't believe in Christ, you can say, hey, the, the historians, not religious books, the historians documented a man named Jesus of Nazareth was uh, brutally killed on a tree on the day that they said he was. So there's no denying Christ exists. That matter of fact, there's a Netflix movie that says the case for Christ. Yeah, well, I, 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 so I read your book and there's something that stuck out to me. How can anyone talk about historical evidence for the resurrection when the resurrection by nature is a miracle? Right? We all know miracles can't be proven scientifically. Correct, but we don't have to prove a miracle to prove a resurrection. 
Okay. Love to hear you explain that one. Yeah, you just have to show that Jesus died and he was seen afterwards. Right, but the very people who claim that they saw him are religious zealots. So in my line of work, we call those biased sources. Well, I'm not interested in bias either, Mr. Strobel. You see, I care about the facts for professional and, and personal reasons. Right, so where are the facts, Dr. Habermas? The resurrection narrative is more legend than it is history. Really? Well, not according to historical records. Did you know that we have a report of the resurrection with specific eyewitnesses that dates all the way back to within months of the resurrection itself? That source also adds that 500 separate people saw Jesus at the same time. We're not talking decades or centuries after the cross, Mr. Strobel. It's months. Movie that says the case for Christ, right, babe? Yeah, that's good. If you haven't seen that, bro, it's like a courtroom and they prove Christ's existence. So it like shuts down everybody. It's, it's pretty good. It, you know, every once in a while, you know, these movies will come out and they'll have some good points to them. But that's a pretty decent movie, A Case for Christ, if you want to prove historically Christ. Um, but let me read that. It says, uh, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we, speaking um, of young... Storm theorists tend to skim over the fact that Jesus was flawed prior to his crucifixion. Do you know what happens in a Roman flogging? Uh, um, yeah, the person is lashed with a whip. No, not lashed. Scourged and pummeled savagely. You see, the, the Galilee whip is braided with metal balls and bone fragments. The flesh on Jesus' back would have been shredded. The very muscles and sinews themselves laid open to exposure. The, the flogging itself would have left Jesus in critical condition from massive blood loss, which is why he collapsed under the weight of the cross that the Romans made him carry through town. Okay, so is it possible that Jesus survives being spiked to the cross? Oh, yes, you could survive it, but it's child's play compared to what comes next in a crucifixion. Slow, agonizing death by asphyxiation from the train. The stress on Jesus' chest muscles would have locked his lungs into the inhale position. Right? So in order to let the breath out, he would have had to shove himself up using his spiked wrists and feet, scraping his shredded back against the wood of the cross, and then sagged back down again in order to draw his next breath, which he would have had to have done over and over and over again until utter exhaustion just made it impossible. And then inevitably, he dies uh, in in theory, but let's let's remember these soldiers. They're not doctors. Okay, so maybe uh, Maybe they took him off the cross and they they thought he was dead, but in fact he wasn't No, of course they weren't medical doctors. They were professional killers, right? And they were quite good at their jobs They had to be if a prisoner escaped alive. They themselves would be executed Speaking of Yasha Allah, Barakat Yahweh, being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. There it goes again. We put on his righteousness. So everything is to pull us out of the darkness of this world. All praises, hallelujah, for all of us that's been uh, pulled out of false religions, pulled out of secular humanism, pulled out of being a damn dog. You know what I'm saying? We were dog. We're not returning to the vomit because we put on the righteousness of a Mashiach, huh? All right, let's go. Let's go ahead and go to the next script. These are many witnesses of putting Christ on. Okay, the next the next script is one Corinthians chapter one, verse thirty. Come on, all right. Say, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. Ooh, that's big. Okay, watch this. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. Watch how this breaks down, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. Okay, how is he made unto us wisdom? What did we read in John 1 and 1? 
the word was God, the word became flesh. What, what, what do you read in this book? Wisdom. This is where you get your wisdom. So he's manifesting himself through this word. He's manifesting himself physically on the earth, acting out the word. Basically, this is the script because he, hey, uh, Daniel Allah, get me, I come in the volume of the book. Give me that. So while he's getting that, I'm gonna keep breaking this down. And uh, Juliano Navarro, if you have any questions, King, uh, feel free to just speak or ask. Uh, we'd love to answer them. And then we'll have a question after the end of the uh, lesson. Uh, how many precepts yes, we got sir. left? Con King. How many precepts we got left? All right, cool. So we might, more we, we might breeze through because some of them will just be reassuring and reaffirming some of these. But we're seeing how many witnesses in the Bible are talking about the righteousness of Christ. Watch this. Now let's, let's talk about this. It says, uh, verse 30, made unto us wisdom and righteousness. And watch this, and sanctification and redemption. The re he, he redeemed us because we, uh, we can't go to the Father but through the Son. We was cut off from the Father for breaking his law, statutes, and commandments but he redeemed us. So that's in the word. So when you read these scriptures, you find your redemption through Christ. Does that make sense? So to the rest of the world, to the rest of the world, they have to recognize these two things. One, Christ was only sent for who? Lost sheep for the house of Israel. Okay, what, what, why was he sent for him? The chosen people. Oh. Because they're lost, the chosen people are lost. So he came and did his job, and his word don't come back void. So we believe on that with faith, and faith is counted to you as what? Con, you see how everything works for our benefit? Everything works. So just believing on Christ makes you righteous. You see what I'm saying? That's beautiful. All right, let's go to the next precept. Everybody understands that? Uh, okay. Uh, the next, the next precept is uh, Isaiah chapter fifty-three, verse eleven. Con, uh, no, I'll bring that out give when you're couple, ready. Give me a couple. Give me a couple cons when you guys are ready. Okay, con. We'll do. Can you repeat that? Can you repeat that? It is uh, Isaiah chapter fifty-three, verse eleven. Hey, uh, Angelo, so if you're on the line, um. Even if you don't pull these up right away, even if you just you got a, pa a paper and a pen and you write it down, when we get you a Bible, you'll be able to we'll be able to go back to these. So well, that's to that's uh, that's that's, uh, that's what I'm doing here. Okay. All right. All right. So, this is Isaiah three verse eleven. He shall see of the travel of his own soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteousness or shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear the iniquities he okay. shall bear their iniquities so you ever hear people saying Christ ain't in the Old Testament you ever heard that that's Isaiah right there talking about Christ right there in the Old Testament who else who else bear all our iniquities that's right elder that's a prophetic scripture right there. Daniela and Dawid, you guys understand that? Oh, and I have the volume of the book, verse 2. Okay, bring that out. This just proves that he's in the volume of the book. Go ahead. Book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 7. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. So even Christ uh, testifies of himself that the Father had set him to do that will. And that's all throughout the scriptures. And Christ, as uh, Elder said, was prophesied to come to bear our iniquities. And as uh, Yahweh said, um, he did that for us and we are to walk in his steps. So everything's lining up to put on Christ. Now putting on Christ can be a scary thing if you're not in the spirit. If you're in the spirit, then, you know, you have a whole different feeling. You feel me? So we praise the most high for understanding what it means to put on Christ. And it looks like we got a brother in it in here, too. 
Yeshaya Bond Khan. Shalom. Shalom. Hey, uh, JJ, was that opening line to seek travel of his, of his own soul? He shall see of the travail of his soul. Oh, tra- not travail. own soul. Yeah. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, which is the uh, seed of Israel. Shalom. Hey, my best. Oh, <laughs> I can Shalom. hear y'all now. Perfect. We can hear you, King. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, family. Yes. Hey, good to meet you. I heard about you. Uh, if you'd like to just introduce yourself, King, and then uh, we'll all introduce ourselves. Yeah, definitely. That would that'll be my pleasure, man. Uh, my name is Yeshaya, born of Pavi Young, son of Ephraim. And, um, yeah, I've been talking to one of the brothers in the camp, man. He's got a mighty spirit on him. So I know that if y'all is elders, man, I, I know the same thing for y'all, man. It's, it's a blessing to be here. Hallelujah. It's a pleasure to have you, King. Go ahead, introduce yourself, King. Hey, Shalom, King. I'm your holder. Huh. It's your brother. Nice He's to meet you. Mm-hmm. And then um, I'm Barack. And we got some uh, brothers. Da- yep, Daniela and Dawid. Dawid and Daniela, but <laughs> son, son. And then a couple sisters on here. Uh, and then a brother, Giuliano Navarro. He's been uh, coming and getting some of this truth with us. So, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to keep breaking down a little bit. And then um, when the lesson gets, uh, I like to open up some dialogue with you, King, and just kind of trying to see what's going on out there. Uh, I think Oxid is from Salinas. Yeah, born and raised. Hallelujah. Is, is, is the truth spreading out there? Um, You know what? Since since I've been hitting the streets out there, it has been little by little. Mm. I'm actually building a camp right now because there's really not too much going on over there, to be real with you. God. Yeah, it's dry bones where, you know, where the most high will plant us to try to wake it up. But um, yeah, definitely, man, we'll be We'll be putting prayers up as you do the work out there. Um, you got a couple of brothers, Akiyam, out there? Yeah, um, we building up, slowing. Uh, we got a camp in Atlanta right now that we building up. And then right now in the 831 in Salinas, mm-hmm. I got only, I'll say like three members, mm-hmm. three solid members. Come on, King. You know, the most high won't provide the increase. Hallelujah. And, and bring solid. But you know what? It's, it's been my understanding that you have to go through some crazy stuff, too. So just hang tight. Uh, um, you got a YouTube channel, too? Uh, Yeah, I do, actually. Oh, hallelujah. Well, too, we'll make sure everybody gets that. Um, uh, Yahweh on the top, he's going to go live tomorrow on the SOT channel. So he's going to send that link out tomorrow, too, so you guys can catch that lesson. Um. We go live on a success journey, and um, I drop videos all the time. So we'd love to see what you guys are doing and and always support. All right, Khan. This verse and, and tonight's lesson is talking about putting on Christ. Um, when I was talking with JJ, uh, Kuna, he was telling me that you guys were speaking about the spirit, you know, going out and speaking on the spirit and things of that caliber. So there's so many facets in this truth, you know, um, there's brothers that come in and understand different different uh, perspectives, but when we all come together, we like to say we're like five fingers. When we come together, we make a strong fist, and that's Israel. You know, so uh, it's a beautiful thing. So, Elder Baba Kashaf, if you can, let's go ahead and pull the next script. We're pulling out Romans chapter three, verse twenty-two. How about a little Shaka Khan? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Come this on. is Romans chapter 3, verse 22. Mm-hmm. Even the righteousness of Yahweh, which is by faith of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So the precept would be the same where it says uh, Abraham was counted to him as righteousness because he had faith. So <clears throat> we've been scattered. We've been put in oppressive situations. We've been ruled over by colonizers, discontinued from our heritage. So basically, the Most High still has a plan to reach into darkness and wake us up just by having faith. So a lot of these Christians that are still caught up 
just in just their little bit of faith of what they know, because they don't really study to show themselves approved. That's just enough for us to go up in here, give these precepts and pull them into putting on Christ, which is keeping the law, statutes and commandments. Come on. Come on. All right. So that's how we want to do. We want to, we want to ask a Christian, what does it mean to put on Christ? And then take them to John one and one. The word was God. The word was with God, these different things and let them know these law, statutes and commandments is what, uh, is the doctrine of Hamashiach, because he said, my doctrine is not my own. Matter of fact, Daniel Allah pulled that. My doctrine is not my own. While he's pulling that, Elder, go ahead, guys. You could grab the next one. Okay, the next one would be Psalm uh, chapter 119, verse 142. Now, this is always that milk scripture. This is a foundation scripture. Try to memorize this the best you can. Uh, this is for everybody that you come in contact with that haven't stepped into the truth yet. Even if they're just yeah. dabbling with it, they're just on the line and the hook. This this right here is pillar. Uh, Psalms 119, uh, 42. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and the law is the truth. All right, so that's always going to be a simple, plain. That's always going to be simple and plain and clear. And, and we talk.